All right, friends, it's Brother James Lyman. I hope you're all doing well tonight, or the morning, for my <clears throat> friends in the Philippines. So I uh, really appreciate uh, Bible Baptist, Temple Baptist Church uh, of GMA to allow me to do these uh, lessons for them, for their people. Friends, let's remember to pray for these people that are over in the Philippines. Uh, consistently serving the Lord, I mean, Bible studies all the time, devotions, uh, and so forth. And so what a blessing. So let's, those in America, those in other countries, please make sure to pray for them. Uh, looks like a tremendous ministry there. And so please pray for them and others that do the messages for them and the work of the ministry that goes out uh, in the area in which they live. So uh, what a blessing. So my name is Brother James Lyman. I'm going to share some things tonight about Roman Catholicism. Uh, I've preached many Roman Catholic conferences, dealt with Catholic theologians, uh, dealt with many different individuals over the years. I got saved in 1981 <clears throat> as a 20-year-old, and um, the Lord's allowed me to witness to many, many, many Catholics, uh, again, many conferences, uh, and so forth. So, uh, what I'd like to do, we're going to we're going to give you a little bit of an outline. We're going to be looking at how to witness to Roman Catholics. So some of this is going to be basic information as far as evangelizing them. And instead of just do one part, next week we are going to do half uh, of the message on facts about Catholicism or, or ways to refute Catholicism and deal with Catholics through their own books. I'll give you a little sneak preview. Uh, any any book that's published by anyone that's, that has inside the front page, Nihil Opstat, means it has been approved by the Vatican. So it's absolutely fair to be able to utilize those, uh, those books that have been approved by the Vatican in, in, in basically stating the facts about Catholicism. We're also going to look at some of those things in the Catechism. And so we're going to cover, there's a lot of areas that they'll say they don't believe, they don't agree with. And you get many that are that are outrightly, blatantly lying to you, especially in the leadership, uh, the bishops, archbishops, and so forth. You get others that are just Catholics their whole life, and they don't understand Catholic doctrine or don't know it. So it's imperative that as we deal with a Roman Catholic, we recognize that who we're dealing with. There's a difference between dealing with somebody who just converted to Catholicism, or they've been a Catholic for 20 or 30, 40 years, they're not familiar with a lot of the doctrines, and somebody who's in a leadership position. And that pretty much goes for dealing with anybody uh, who is in a false religion. Uh, and also, let's remember that our goal is not to win an argument. That may appeal to our flesh, but let's make sure that our goal is to present to them the biblical gospel of Jesus Christ in hopes that the Holy Spirit of God works on them, convicts them of their sin, and helps them to realize that salvation is through Jesus Christ alone, apart from any work. So that's just a little bit of a preview for what we're going to do next week, probably for about 30 minutes. And then after that, we will probably cover uh, one of the other groups. I'm going to estimate at this time that we will deal with Scientology, though I'm not guaranteed with that uh, about that at all yet. So... I'll have to pray about that. So, again, we're going to look at some basic things, some specific things about Roman Catholicism, how to respond to them, how to witness to them, uh, those that are Roman Catholics. Amen. So, thanks be to God that those of us that are saved don't rely and should not rely uh, on uh, ritual, tradition, popes, priests, and things like that. We have the ability and the privilege to be able to rely upon the Word of God. Amen? So what a blessing that is. So uh, please pray for those others also in the Philippines uh, at the church that are doing these messages. And Brother Dan in the States presently uh, going back over to the Philippines at some point in the next few weeks, I believe. So please pray again for that ministry. Let's make that uh, something that when you get off, I'm asking you just to pray for that ministry and the brethren there and the ladies, the sisters that help, what a tremendous work. So uh, before we begin, we're going to pray in just a moment, but I, uh, I'd like to give a little bit of a challenge to you personally as a believer. And whether you're in the Philippines, uh, Africa, uh, the United States, or uh, any other country, uh, could be uh, Australia, could be the Honduras or Chile or whatever, 
how much have you given the gospel out in some form or another in the last seven days? And I just want to encourage you, not being judgmental, not being critical. But, but, and I know we're dealing with the cults, but at the same point, if we believe that the Lord Jesus Christ could return in the next uh, year, 10 years, 20 years, whatever, uh, if we believe that the Roman Catholic Church is wrong scripturally and that those people are not going to, the, to heaven because they've rejected the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, then I wonder how much work are we doing for Christ. So just want to encourage you about that. Other than that, I'll just uh, share with you. So uh, gospel tracts, great way to do that. So I encourage you to give gospel tracts out. Amen. I tell the young people at church, I'll say, if you catch me without a gospel tract, I owe you $5. So uh, I know that doesn't sound very Baptist, but uh, I want to be accountable. I want to make sure I always have some. Now, they're very smart, these young people at church. So they'll say, how many tracks do you have on you? So, uh, for example, you know, I'll hold up, let's say this is 10, and I'll say, I've got 10. So then they'll say, okay, can I get 10 tracks from you? In hopes that I'm not uh, wise enough to realize what they're doing. And so they're hoping I'll give them the tracks, have none left, and say, Brother Lyman, you owe us ten, uh, $5. So uh, what a blessing. So, And I will share with you some new shirts that I got in <clears throat> in the last week or so. So this is a very basic shirt, but it works. So Jesus saves, amen? Uh, what a blessing. You'll never see Muhammad saves. You'll never see Mary saves on the shirts. You'll never hear Biden saves or Trump saves. And uh, But you'll see that. And so the back says, Christ died for our sins. Uh, if you happen to know where that verse is, please let me know. Give a response. Uh, here's another shirt. Got this from a friend in Australia, the design. And so I copied this from her. And so it's very nice, very nicely done. Uh, I'll hide myself here for a minute. It's always a good thing. And so what a blessing. Uh, Acts 16.31a uh, uh, or b. Okay. And then the back says this. Christ died for our sins. So can you get the idea I like? Uh, Christ died for our sins. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus saves. Amen. So let's go ahead and do the, uh, the spiritual thing. Uh, because we all need it, amen? Probably more of that than we have, at least myself. And So let's pray and ask the Lord to bless the time uh, that we have as we open the Word of God and uh, and get a burden for those that are lost. That, I don't know if I like to say get a burden, but let's ask the Lord to, to work, do a work in our hearts for those that are in the Roman Catholic Church. There should be no hate for the Catholic. There should be no repulsion for the Catholic. There should be compassion for the Catholic that is lost. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to come together. Thank you, Lord God, for the church and uh, the leadership and what a blessing and a privilege it is uh, to share some things from your word. And Lord God, I pray that uh, you would be with their ministry and be with everyone involved, the leadership and the people and uh, that are not in leadership. Lord, bless their ministry. Please put a hedge of protection around it. Pray you bless their efforts, their work, their toil, their sweat. Uh, and just pray, Lord, that you'd bless them and use them. Help us now, we ask. I pray you give me clarity of thought and mind. Help us as we open your word in Christ's name. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to look at a few things again now, and then some things for about 30 minutes next week. So the Roman Catholic Church, believe it or not, is the biggest cult there is. Now, Walter Martin, um, famed Christian author, did a tremendous book years ago, and it was called Kingdom of the Cults. He also came out with a sequel called Kingdom of the Occult. It was never published while he was alive, uh, but it is a tremendous work where family members took all those notes and they ended up making that into a, a book that is available. But one mistake I'll say, not being critical, but Walter Martin did is he gave all of his, uh, he dealt with Scientology, Christian science, Baha'ism, uh, you know, all these different uh, cults, but he left out the biggest one there is. And that's Roman Catholicism. And, and so the, the problem is in modern day life, even amongst Christianity sometimes, we're not careful about throwing out the word Christian. And sometimes it's generic. As long as somebody's not running around in a loincloth in another country, we would consider them Christian. As long as somebody has a Bible or goes to church, we would consider them Christian. And friends, that's not the case. Amen. By the way, if you're there, give me a heads up. Let me know where you're from, where you're listening from. 
uh, that would be a blessing. So we're looking at biblical Christianity and the false religion of Roman Catholic Catholicism and how to evangelize them, how to witness to them. So a few tips I'll say is this to begin with. Number one, make sure your focus is to give the gospel. You can deal with all these issues and some we're going to look at and go into what the Bible says. But our goal is to evangelize, to give them the gospel of the grace of God, First Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 5, uh, Acts 16, 31a, and so forth, that they would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? That they would repent and believe the gospel. And you say, what does that mean? It, uh, to repent is that change of mind that they're no longer, as a Roman Catholic, going to trust the church, their baptism, their works, their membership, their sacraments, their grace, or Mary. And now they're having a repentance toward God. They're considering the true and living God and their condition before a true and living God, and they're going to change their mind and no longer trust in works, and they're going to trust Jesus Christ alone. Amen? Second thing I'll say is make sure you pray while you're talking with them. A lot of blindness. Uh, I dealt with a gentleman yesterday, went into Sam's Club, and I had one of the, uh, this verse shirt as I went in. First time I ever wore it, I just knew the Lord was going to do something, and I walked in, and uh, within three seconds, I'd say, individuals standing there says wow look at the look how big the print is on that shirt the lettering and we ended up talking for about 30 minutes his name is mike please pray for him he asked why i was roman catholic and i said no and got to gently but firmly discuss the roman catholic religion and how it offered no solution to the sin problem and uh, you know that's really what it comes down to folks you can have any religion you want any cult you want any group you want but do they offer a solution to the sin problem? And the basic truthful answer, friends, is that only Bible-believing Christianity has the solution for the sin problem. Amen. So uh, as we were talking, it's been about 30 minutes, and uh, almost immediately, within a minute or two, a gentleman came up, him and his wife, and they, they professed to be saved. And uh, so they listened. They listened listen to the conversation. They both wanted my information, both got my email. One already friended me on Facebook within probably 20 minutes, uh, the one who professed to be saved, and what a blessing that is. And uh, So again, the verse shirts work. But we discussed Roman Catholicism, and I will really encourage you, as you witness to anybody, to pray. Because so you can have all the knowledge up here, you can have all the right words come out of your mouth as you give the gospel. But what we need to do as believers is have the Holy Spirit of God, ask God the Father to allow the Spirit of God to work on that individual that is lost, still in his sins, trusting his works, maybe uncaring uh, about salvation, that the Spirit of God would work and they would understand the gospel. And uh, so that's what we're looking for. Uh, conviction of sin, understanding the gospel. So it is vitally important to pray as you're dealing with and witnessing to anyone at all. Uh, number three, basically understand that most Roman Catholics think they are the Christian church. They think they are the first Christian church uh, and so forth. And so it's imperative to, to, to deal with them in that context uh, and, and basically to re-educate them that you're not the Christian church. You weren't around in 100 A.D. or 200 A.D. There may have been things that have started around two to 300, especially 300 A.D., where some of those false doctrines came in, <coughs> but there was no Roman Catholic Church as we know it. So when you think about the institution of the Roman Catholic Church, all that goes on there, the lighting of the candles, the, uh, the praying to the Mary statue, uh, the uh, concept of communion or uh, the Lord's table being the way it is, it's very easy to see that those things were not happening throughout uh, the Gospels, amen? And, uh, well, much later would be even more important as far as Paul's writings in the book of Acts. So let's look at a few things. Again, some of this will be very basic. Salvation. The Roman Catholic Church, and again, I'm going to deal with facts from them, from their catechism and from of the books that are uh, approved by the Vatican. And so I'm going to do most of that tomorrow. But to give a summary, 
Roman Catholics, when you witness to them, they're very deceptive. Remember, Satan is the god of this world. He's blinded the eyes of them that believe not. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, and Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. And so, when you ask them if you're saved, they will say yes. In fact, some of their response is similar to Mormonism. And so then if you ask them, um, are you saved by grace? They will say yes. Uh, and so you have to be very careful how you deal with them in any cult, any religious group, any individual, in fact, that you deal with. It is vitally important to get them to define their terms. And so, for example, with Mormonism, salvation means resurrected out of the grave, at least one aspect of salvation. So with a Roman Catholic, you can say you're saved by grace, and they will say, yes, you certainly are. But once again, Satan is the master deceiver, and here's how he works. So basically what Roman Catholic doctrine says is, yes, you are saved by grace, but you receive that grace when you go through and perform and participate in the sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church. In other words, it's grace is offered to you only if you participate in those works. And if you don't do that, then you're not receiving the grace. And so it's important to realize that that's how Roman Catholics think. Amen? Do you need to be an expert on the Roman Catholic Church? Certainly not. But it does help to have some information such as this and how to deal with them. So it's, it's important to utilize verses that will counter their, their belief. So if you ask them, are you saved by grace through faith? And they say, yeah, or by, by grace. If, if you, they will say yes and say, okay, here, now here's how I do it. You may do it a different, uh, a different way. At that point, I would say, oh, so you don't believe works are necessary. And that's where instantly the self-righteousness pops up. Again, the scripture tells us that man parallel, this is my paraphrased version, man likes to boast of his own goodness. And so as you're dealing with them about this issue, they will pop up with, oh, yes, you know, I've got to be baptized. I've got to be, however they respond, be specific. The devil wants you to be generic and not be specific. For example, you might ask somebody if you're saved. They might say yes or no. If you leave it at that, you're, you might be allowing the devil to get through and allow somebody to think they're saved when they're not. So we need to not be generic. Are you saved? We need to ask what makes you saved How, and, and let them respond. Don't put words in their mouth. So with a Roman Catholic, you can say, uh, are you saved by grace? Yes. Okay, so you don't have to have works for salvation. Their normal response is, yes, you do. And then you push it even a little bit further, carefully, lovingly, but firmly. Say, so, do you believe baptism, water baptism, is necessary to save you? And the, res the response, 99.9% .9 of the time from a Roman Catholic, is yes. So you want to deal with verses like Romans chapter 4, verse 5. The Bible says, but to him that worketh not. And this one verse is, has dispelled Roman Catholic theologians. It has caused them to stop, all their mouth be stopped uh, and guilty before God. It has caused them to not continue discussions. It has caused them to shake their fists. It has caused them to get angry. It's caused them to get upset. Again, when you're utilizing Bible, do not let them just go to another verse, to another verse, to another verse. That's what the cults do. So Romans chapter 4, verse 5, I'll read it to you carefully, King James Bible. But to him that worketh not. So you do it a section at a time. And the ideal, again, is to have them read the word of God. Amen. So but to him that worketh not. So stop right there. So, sir... Uh, what would a work be? Would water baptism be a work? Now, sometimes they're so deceived, they're going to say, no, it's not. Anything is what you have to do. You have to be firm. Anything that is something you have to do is a work. 
So, but to him that worketh not, is baptism a work? If they say no, I'm sorry, sir, you know better, you know better than I do. It is, is it not something you have to do, sir? A physical thing you have to do. So it's a work. So church membership, a work. The sacraments, a work. Uh, the, the rosary, a work. Confessional, a work. So you get my point there? And so it's, so you go through that verse, so sir, the Bible says, but then it worketh not, but you're telling me you've got to work. So which one is right, sir? Then you can also go to, to Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, sir, is water baptism a work of righteousness? No, it's not. Sorry, sir. I have to correct you. I care about you. I love you. I want you to come to Christ. But, sir, you've got to be honest with yourself. The gentleman I witnessed to last night, it was pretty amazing because he basically agreed with just about everything I said, even though it was in contrast to the Roman Catholic Church. So it's powerful to see the Spirit of God work through the Word of God in somebody's life. Uh, and I'm praying this man, Mike, does come to Christ as his Savior. So... Um, Romans 4, 5, but them that worketh not. Then, part two of that verse, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. Now, even most Christians will say, well, that means Jesus. Now, think about it. Who justifies the ungodly? God the Father does. But them that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. Third part, his faith his faith, his belief, his trust, his faith is counted for righteousness. What a blessing to be able to preach a gospel, share a gospel, give tracts out with the right gospel, to preach the gospel of the grace of God, that salvation is a free gift, and it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Amen? Uh, so again, they're going to be deceptive. They're going to try to be pushy. They're going to try to go by what... Uh, I think it's Scott Hahn said, or the local priest or whatever. And they're going to have this concept, this viewpoint, uh, to, to twist things around to say water baptism's not a work and the sacraments are to work. They are, folks. It's time to be firm. Amen. There are souls at stake. Don't be so nice. Now, you ought to be nice. You ought to be pleasant. However, do not be so nice and so pleasant you fail to stand on the word of God, and you fail to give them the gospel truth. Amen? So, his faith is counted for righteousness. Instantly, what they're going to do is they're going to start going to another verse, like James 2 or uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Sir, we're not going to go there. I want you to see what this verse says. So once they read it again, hopefully, once you are able to make it very clear that this passage, uh, and you're hoping they'll say it, you're hoping they'll recognize that, uh, that it, it depends on how honest they are. So once you do that, uh, you have the ability for them to speak in agreement with the Word of God. So if you say, well, it says, you know, uh, faith is kind of ferocious, does that mean uh, anything else helps or anything else saves? If they're going to be honest with the Bible, with that verse, they will understand the answer is, according to the Bible, it's not necessary. Amen? So it's important that we go through the Bible. So another one, um, Romans chapter 5, verse 1, just a few verses later, says, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. What a blessing. Imagine what a blessing that is. So the ability to uh, become a child of God by faith in Christ alone. What a blessing. So now look with me, if you would, we're going to look at Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11. So it's good to nail that down. Here's a good thought that I learned many, many years ago. I don't know if I learned it from somebody else or whatever. But don't let an unclear verse be defined Excuse me, don't let a clear verse be defined by an unclear verse or passage. 
So in other words, if the Bible says salvation is by grace through faith alone, don't look for other verses that would counter that uh, and be in contrast to that. Uh, allow the Word of God to be your authority, Roman Catholic, not your, not the priest, not the confessional, not routine, uh, not the, the, the uh, catechism, but the Word of God. Amen? So Romans chapter 11 says this. Romans chapter 11, a tremendous verse, uh, says this. Romans chapter 11, verse 6. And if it, by, it is by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So simply put, basically that means this. That if something is completely free, and it is a gift then works have no part in it whatsoever. And if something is a work where you get your wage based upon the the effort that you're doing, the work you do every day or every week or month or whatever, uh, that, they, that that is a work. And the two never meet is what it comes down to. So, so you have grace over here, works over here, and the twain shall never meet meet. What a blessing. Amen. And so it's important to uh, see that as we look in the scripture. So the Bible says this again, verse six, Romans chapter 11, verse six, uh, says this, except I lost my page. Give me just a moment. So Romans chapter 11, <clears throat> verse six, and if it, be, if it by grace, then there's no more works. So you cannot have the two. You will never for salvation, in this dispensation, see works here and grace here, and they're together. You will not see that at all. Amen? It is not based on what you do, what you have done, what you promised to do. It is based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen? So you have faith and works. They'll never meet. They can't. They'll never meet. In fact, they're so far apart they'll never meet. What a blessing that our salvation is a gift of God. Amen. What a tremendous thing. And so, uh, as you deal with a more uh, a Roman Catholic, recognize that works are going to be the primary issue. And also remember this. Try to stick with the, um, the gospel. You can deal with other issues. I'll give you some ammunition for those. But at the same point, Let's try to remember to keep everything right in that we are concerned about their soul and not necessarily about winning an argument uh, about the Pope uh, and who originated the books and all those things. So salvation, Romans 4, 5, Romans 5, 1, Romans chapter 11, verse 6, Ephesians chapter 2, 8 through 10. For by grace are you saved through faith, does not say faith and works, you've got to be firm. Mormons will try the same trick. Well, it just doesn't say that, but it says it in other areas. Wait a minute. If it was that important, and it was, and it was going to be a basis for someone to escape the lake of fire and be with Christ, would not Christ have made it clear? Would not the Spirit of God, as men wrote the book, make it very clear? So, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. So again, the illustration, here's a gift. Uh, I did this with the Catholic at Sam's Club yesterday. Sir, can I give you a gift? Well, if I tell you, I'll give you this gift, but you have to mow my lawn for a week, sir, would it be a gift? And the plain, simple, honest answer is no, it would no longer be a gift. Why? Why, sir? Because I'd have to earn it. That's right. So basically, sir, this is salvation is a gift similar to what I'm giving you. I'd like you to take it and read it later on. But folks, I want you to understand very clearly that you need to be firm and discerning and trust God when you deal with a Roman Catholic or any other individual. That salvation is by grace through faith alone. So again, uh, Titus chapter 2. For by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. That does away with anything that you'd have to do uh, physically to receive Christ. But to him that worketh not, excuse me, I'm sorry, for by grace you save through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, 
lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. I'm sorry, um, but the, um, Romans 4, 5, For by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Uh, and so it's, it's important that we look at those verses in context. Amen? Uh, so as you deal with these things, explain to them, go through sin, go through the sin problem. Sir, do you believe you sin? Yes. How do you get rid of that sin? Well, I'll go to confessional. Sir, could you show me? I'm not trying to be offensive, but sir, could you show me in the Bible where it says going to a confessional wipes away your sin? Or your water baptism, or your church membership, or a compilation of all of them? Simply put, my friends, it does not. And so as you deal with the, the, with evangelizing them, look at the verses, Romans 4, 5, Romans 5, 1, Romans 11, 6, Titus chapter 2, 8 through 10, uh, and, uh, and stick with them, folks. It'll help them, and the Spirit of God can work through it more, I believe, when we're utilizing right scripture. Yes, God can work no matter what. No matter what, if we're using bad terminology, God can work. But at the same point, he, he puts things in his word that we ought to know to be able to help them. The Bible says, 1 Peter 3.15, Be ready to give an answer to every man that asks you through a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Amen? So, deal with, the, deal with salvation first and foremost. So, do not let them be comfortable if they're lost. Uh, do not let them just talk over you. Uh, be firm, be polite, stick with the conversation. There's times where it's gotten pretty rough out there in some of these environments. And they'll say, uh, you know, I want to talk to you. And they want to rally your cage. And they want to cuss at you. And they want to shake their fist at you. But the, the truth of it, folks, is this. Is to be Christ-like and to be able to give the biblical answers to help them in their situation. So... As we consider some other things other than salvation for the next few minutes, realize some of these are vitally important. And you can actually utilize these things to help them come to Christ, come to faith in Christ, or at least understand about Christ. So look with me, if you would, uh, at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. So here we deal with water baptism. Now the Apostle Paul said this, uh, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And by the way, you can ask a Roman Catholic, are you saved? Yes. Sir, what is the gospel? I've never had a Roman Catholic answer right. So the gospel is that Christ died for our sins. Nothing else is acceptable. Uh, not, uh, not believe in Jesus in a generic sense. Uh, not uh, trust water baptism, not believe how good you are, uh, and so forth. It's that Christ died for our sins. Amen. What a blessing. So John chapter 3, we're going to look at a verse here uh, that many use. So the Bible does tell us uh, in, in uh, the scripture to, uh, to basically trust Christ alone apart from any works. Amen. So John chapter 3, look at the context here, very popular. So keep in mind, when the Bible uses a word, it doesn't mean that's the way it always uses it. And so we'll see that with Romans chapter, or John chapter 3. So obviously we're all familiar with verse 16, uh, but look with me, if you would, at verse um, 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Uh, look down, me if you would, at, I'm sorry, uh, verse, uh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to condense a little bit here. So look at me if you would at John chapter 3, verse 6. I'll just condense and go there a little bit. Start with verse 5. So Roman Catholics and others, they see the word baptism and they think it means water baptism. If they see the word water. They do the same thing with First Peter chapter 3, verse 18 through 21. So here you see John chapter 3, verse 6, that which is born of the, uh, well, verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So all of a sudden people think, wow, 
I've got to be born of the Spirit, and I've got to be born of the, of the water. So they think that's water baptism. By the way, there is a baptism that saves. I'll share that with you in just a moment. So verse 6, that which is born of the flesh. See, context, context and rightly dividing are your two biggest helps when you open the Bible uh, to learn it. Amen? So John chapter 3, now at verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So right there, there's a contrast. So he's talking about the spiritual versus the fleshly. Amen? Uh, that which is born of the flesh is what? Flesh. Your flesh is always going to be flesh, and it's probably going to be rotten flesh. Amen? But it says that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So you have two contrasting things here. It's not difficult to understand. He's, Jesus Christ is contrasting it, not me. So he that is born of the flesh is flesh. He is born of the spirit is spirit. So look at that. What could, what could water be referring to? Folks, it cannot be referring to water baptism. It would be totally contradictory to the rest of the word of God. But could it not be as we're dealing with the flesh? Now think about this. What is a baby born in? The womb. Amen? But think about this. In that womb is a sack, and guess what it's filled with? Water. Amen? That would line up 100% with the concept of the fleshly birth. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. That's all you have. That's all you've been born is in the flesh. You are not saved. And what a tragedy that would be to hear a gospel message like this and then return and believe on Jesus Christ. So uh, if you continue in the passage and be firm, because they're going to say, no, it doesn't say that. It, doesn't, you know, it means baptism. Wait a minute. Who, who said it means baptism? If the Lord Jesus Christ wanted it to say baptism, excuse me, if the Word of God through the uh, inspiration of the Spirit of God wanted that word in there, do you think that they could have put it in there? See, God is higher than us. Amen? So, John chapter 3, now look at me, verse 7. Marvel not, I said unto thee, you must be born again. It wouldn't blow through it. Let's just, I won't, I won't go through all that. Uh, so basically what you see is that the word of God teaches very clearly water baptism does not save and has no bearing on it. So again, I will use what I call the chair illustration many times. So I've got a chair next to me. I'm not going to go ahead and do that right now. Uh, and I, I utilize some of these illustrations quite often. As so I'll say, sir, ma'am, whoever I'm talking to, uh, and there still is a difference, amen. I'll tell them, I'll say, okay, so you're telling me that baptism is necessary when the Bible says it's not. But you show me where it says that, and most of them, if not all of them, have no clue, no answer at all. Then you, then you ask this, okay, sir, you're trusting in your religion, your baptism, your church membership to some degree. So I'll say, sir, the Bible says it's a free gift, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. And I'll say this, I'll say, sir, imagine you're sitting in a chair over there. We could just use myself as an example. So imagine I'm sitting in this chair. You ask me if it will hold me up, and I say, yes, I firmly believe it will. Well, how do you prove that? You sit in it. Amen? And you rest in and you sit in that chair. That's mindful of the gospel of the grace of God that Christ died for us and saved, sealed, and settled. Amen? But... The Roman Catholic Church, generally, they'll want to argue that point. They'll want to start uh, getting upset a lot of times. And yes, sometimes the Roman Catholic uh, preaching editions are more volatile uh, than other events. So stick with the stuff. Be firm. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not being mean. But the, the word of God is right, and you're wrong. So stick with that. Amen? So what a baptism, John 3. We just pretty much cleared that up. So here's another one. Look at John chapter 6. Now again, these are subjects you do not have to go into. Probably more so uh, water baptism than anything else. Uh, oh, while you're turning there, before you go to John 6, also if you would, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, hopefully you're all with me okay today. I'm not getting much of a response tonight. But I know that happens. So, Rome, uh, first reading is chapter 
12, I'm sorry, for, um, uh, 1 Corinthians, look at me if you would, oh, sorry, I'm in 2 Corinthians, uh, 12, 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, look what it says here in verse 13. So here is the baptism that saves. It's the only one that does save. Amen. Water baptism will never come close to it because you're going to get dirty the next way, the next day, and you're probably already dirty because uh, it does not clean our heart. Amen. So First Corinthians chapter 12, and look at me if you would at verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 tells us this, and again, it's very, very, very clear. Amen? Um, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether it would be Jews or Gentiles, whether it be fond or free or been able to drink into one Spirit. So see, read that carefully. Let them read it. The Bible says... For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether it be Jews or Gentiles. Amen? That's a very powerful, powerful statement because it's contrary to the biggest false religion in the world with many more members uh, than we would think. So it's vitally important to stay with the Word of God, utilize the Word of God. We deal with this stuff about uh, baptism, birth, natural birth, things like that. Be clear. Do not use an unclear verse to prove a clear verse. Amen? That's my thought and my prayer for all of you. So, um, again, verse, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. For by one spirit are you all baptized into one body. So we are placed into the body of Christ once we've come to Christ. What a tremendous thing. And who knows how big it is, especially compared to this room. So that's works and baptism and salvation and i hope and pray this has been a help to you due to time i'm not going to go real long um we're at about 45 minutes right now i want to cover some other things next week so i'll see how things go with our time i know we'd like to cover the catechism uh briefly in their own works uh and uh, again when you deal with that if somebody gets upset and says that's not in the catholic bible when it starts in uh it's very much works and that's in the bible so very powerful to use that. So hopefully this has all been a help to you. We'll look at quite a bit next week for probably around 45 minutes. Depends on our time. If I do take too long uh, on the um, uh, subject we're going to be looking at about Roman Catholicism finishing up uh, the primary groups, we will also consider what God says in his word in the scriptures. Amen. So hopefully it's been a help to you. Thank you, Temple Baptist Church of GMA. Thank you, uh, Brother Dan, many others that help. And we just pray that the Lord will use this to stir your heart, give you a burden for souls, help you to live for Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness. Please give us a good night. Thank you for the word of God. Please strengthen us and be with us now. Be with those that are lost that we're going to witness to tomorrow or the next day. Pray Lord that God's seeds will be planted. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. All right, you'll have a blessed night. Hope you're doing well. I appreciate the privilege of being able to hear on Temple Baptist Church, GMA.